Hi, my name is Leroy Harbach. I'm a senior instructor for CMC Rescue. We're here today in the Phoenix area to go through the MPD device and to uh, introduce tandem raising and lowering systems to the Phoenix regional area and to the instructional staff. Want to take some time to go through the nomenclature, how the device actually operates, the care and maintenance, and how to build and use tandem systems. So let's take a look at the video now. So <clears throat> parts and pieces wise, okay, if we start on the front cover plate, and that's where this would be considered the front, this is considered the back, okay? <laughs> if you look at, we start with the release handle. The release handle doesn't do anything unless you lift up on it, okay? And you'll actually fear if you if you grab it you and you lift up, you fear you'll feel the gears kind of mesh together because there's a little ring <coughs> gear on the inside that meshes with the sprocket gear on the bottom end. And what that does is that actually controls the swing brake. That's the movable brake or swing brake on the inside that actually locks the device off. Okay? So if I have this thing engaged all the way and the rope runs in between the fixed friction post and the swing brake. What's gonna happen is that gets squeezed in there, okay? If I lift up on the handle and I turn it counterclockwise or to the left, that moves that swing brake back and forth, okay? Because really what you're doing is you're taking it and you're changing that coefficient of friction of the rope coming over the top of the ship, okay? Next thing is the parking brake. Um, there's a lot of questions about when do I use it, when do I not use it, how do I use it, all that kind of thing. <clears throat> there's really two times that you want to be using the parking brake. Not so much on changeovers. If I'm changing from a lowering to a raise or a raise to a lower, I'm not going to set the parking brake. Okay? If the operator needs to walk away, let's say my operators are here and they, the guys down on the end go, hey man, we need you down here for a minute. At that point in time, you're going to go ahead and set the parking brake, take a bite of rope, bring it out in the front, and tie an overhand knot in that universal sign that the system has been saved off. Okay? Rope can't go in or out if the parking brake is set. Okay? I can force rope in with a heavy enough load and enough mechanical advantage. I can force rope to go in, but you're going to know right away if the parking brake is on because when you lift up and try and turn the handle, there is a lot of resistance and it shouldn't be that way. So if you look at it, if you grab a hold of it and kind of turn it and look at it from the bottom end of the device and turn the parking brake on, you see how much that swing brake actually moves into place into that maximum friction position. Okay, another key thing to keep in mind is if you take this thing and you try and load rope in it with the parking brake on, it isn't gonna happen because there's not enough clearance between the swing brake and the fixed friction post to get the rope into it. You gotta remember the parking brake's gotta be off when you load rope into the device. Okay, questions on that so far? All right, flip it over. I like to grab it kind of like this because it gives it a stable platform, okay? If you look at the back side, <clears throat> here's the hardest part to remember, okay? You need to make the rope look like the picture <laughs> okay the load has to go on the short side of the body comes over the shift down through in between the friction post and the swing brake okay and you close it up close up the device okay that's all it takes to load it we'll go through that whole procedure here in a second the way the other device that you see here now my fixed friction post is on the back side that's where the friction comes from not from feathering the device on and off, okay? It actually comes from the backside just like it would with a bar rack, okay? The more I engage the rope into that V groove, the more friction I have, okay? So I want my hand position, and it's really kind of a key thing, I want to have my hand position back behind towards the anchor, okay? Secondary friction post is used if the load is heavy enough and you feel like it's a little bit out of control, bring the rope inside to outside 
but I'll be honest with you, it's like adding two bars to a rack, okay? That extra 180 degree bend adds an incredible amount of friction. If you look at how, the sh how they're shaped, this one's kind of a V. This is an obvious V, and if you look at the shiv itself, it's not a U-shaped shiv, it's a V-shaped shiv. Because there's more friction in a V than there is in a U. Okay? The heavier the load, the deeper it sinks into that shiv, which means the more friction that I have overall. The way the device works is the shiv will spin to high efficiency pulley on the rays. Okay? When the weight comes into it, when it comes time to reset the system, if you try and turn it the opposite direction, the swing brake engages, okay? And that actually squeezes that rope in between that friction post and that V groove on that shoe. All right, so let me ask you a question. What does that say right there? Always grip rope. Okay, uh, what does it say right there? I wear reading glasses. You wear reading glasses? All right, who, does, who else does not wear reading glasses? All right. So what does it say right there? Always grip rope. Okay. And what does it say? I don't have my reading glasses on. Right there. Always grip rope. Okay. You think they're kind of serious about it. Okay. You've got to keep your hand on the tail of the rope. 